Today we're going to be talking about how you can grow as a storyteller using a principle from educational theory called challenge and support. Let's get started. Now I have a background in educational theory from my time working in higher education, but also from my master's degree. And the thing that's interesting whenever we talk about the idea of challenge and support as a theory is how well it actually applies to becoming a better game master. Because there's something that I've seen happen a lot on subreddits and Twitter and just anywhere where people get together to talk about how to become a better GM. Uh, it's the idea of how you can grow and balance the level of challenges that your players are actually going to be facing. Finding a balance between challenge and support is really hard, and some systems like Dungeons & Dragons use something called challenge rating when you're talking about combat. But challenge rating doesn't necessarily apply to things like social interaction, and if you're not playing a game system that has challenge rating, then how do you know that you're balancing the challenge that the players you're actually looking for and providing enough support for them to become successful. And in educational theory, there's a similar concern. It's the idea of how do you grow a student using the appropriate amount of challenges that they have to face in an academic or social setting, but still support them enough to feel like they're capable of completing those challenges. And that theory, surprisingly enough, or maybe not at all, is called challenge and support. The idea behind challenge and support is fairly simple. It comes from somebody called Professor Nevin Sanford. Think about training wheels on a bicycle. When you're first starting to learn how to ride a bicycle and you don't have training wheels, then you're probably just gonna spend a lot of time falling off, skinning your knee, banging your head, and if you're smart enough to wear a helmet, banging the helmet. Training wheels go on the back of a bicycle. And the reason they go on the back of the bicycle is so that you can actually get acclimated to the balance required in order to ride your bicycle without falling over. Once you reach the level of skill required to ride the bike without training wheels, the training wheels come off. So think about challenge and support in the same way. The challenge is riding the bicycle. The support is the training wheels. If you kept the training wheels on the bicycle for the entire time that you rode it for the rest of your life, the training wheels would get in the way and you might even end up falling over because they stop you from turning properly on the bicycle. So the idea behind challenge and support theory is to find that nice perfect arc between the amount of challenge that a student faces and the amount of support that they receive. So how can you do that? How can a college student for example, receive the proper amount of challenge and support. Well, if you take a look at this, those students that don't have a lot of challenge or support that are really on the low end, generally speaking, probably don't have a lot of reasons to try. If nothing's challenging for them, then they're probably not going to try to succeed where they might have failed the first time. And if they don't have a lot of support to try and succeed, then they might feel like it's a fruitless endeavor. Similarly, if you have somebody who has far too much support and not enough challenge in their life, then you can end up with a situation where they stagnate. A student might might not be able to actually feel like they need to accomplish anything on their own because the level of support that they have in their lives are really high. On the other hand, if you see a student that actually has so much challenge in their life and no support, then what you end up with is somebody who just feels like everything's impossible. If they're working very hard, but they don't have the support from loved ones, professors, then they're probably not going to feel like it's worth their time to actually pursue the challenges that are placed in front of them. That's not to say that that's true for everybody. Yes. Some people are very determined and need less support than others. Some people need far more support than others. Sometimes the need for that support comes from an economic basis. Sometimes that need for support comes from an emotional basis. Different people have different requirements for support and challenge as they grow through things like their education. So in the world that I work in, education, where I know that I'm actually nailing the perfect amount of challenge and support that a student might need, I start to see the student challenging themselves in a way where they are starting to look for new ways to interpret information and push themselves to grow their own skill levels regardless of what they're trying to learn. If they're excited enough to innovate how they approach a challenge, you know that that student might be receiving enough support in order to become successful in what they're trying to learn, in order to overcome the challenges that they're facing. So what does all of this have to do with becoming a good storyteller? By now you might have kind of gotten the hint that I'm trying to lay down here. The challenge and support theory is actually a fairly simplistic model, but I think it applies a great deal to people that are actually trying to figure out how to balance their game if they're new to becoming a storyteller.
A lot of you are probably thinking, okay, great, yeah, I get it. I need to challenge my players and I need to support my players, but how do I do that? There's no one way to nail the perfect balance of challenge and support for your players every time, just like there's no one way to nail challenge and support for a student going through their education every single time. Everything that you're going to need in order to balance your campaign is subjective, but approaching your game from the lens of challenge and support can give you an idea of how to actually be successful and and how to notice when you're being successful with challenging your players with new and different things in your games. With too much support and not enough challenge, then your players might actually become unmotivated to come to the game. It might feel like something that they show up and it's just too easy. On the other hand, if you have too much challenge and not enough support, then you end up with players getting really frustrated with the fact that they can't become successful. I've played with plenty of storytellers in my time that have really cranked up the challenge, but I always felt like they provided just enough support sometimes to make me feel like I could overcome what challenges they were throwing at me with a player you might see them start to think outside the box in terms of combat or role-playing you might see them start to try different types of characters on you might see them start to get more engaged in their characters background all of those things point to the idea of a player who has enough challenge in game to want to try to do something different but still feel supported enough in their expeditions and their experimentation with those new types of things that they're trying to bring to the table. So I've talked a lot about the idea of challenge, support, and how they work together, but what are some ways that I've found to actually help notice that balance or create that balance in a game that you might be running. All of these tips are ways that have worked for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean these tips are going to work for your players or your parties. You're welcome to try them out, and I didn't create all of them, but they're definitely ones that I've used over the years with a good degree of success. If you want to ask your players to really get inside the heads of their characters and challenge themselves to get more involved in the story, ask them to explain their goals to you. Better yet, you might actually challenge them to explain their goals in character to another character that's a player. That method can kind of push them into the idea of thinking through how their character works, but also give them a chance to really talk through something that if they've thought of their character's goals already, they should already be familiar with. So if you've supported them in the idea of generating goals for their characters, you can challenge them to explain those goals in game. And I found that to be very, very helpful. Something that I've seen work more than I've seen it fail, and to that end, I've actually never seen it fail when it's been done, is have your party elect a team leader. Now, sometimes I've heard stories about this going very, very wrong, but I feel like if you as a storyteller know your players very well, you can take an NPC in whatever game you're playing and ask your party, who's your leader? There's lots of different options that your players are going to have to think through in order to answer that question. And they might come up with something that is a traditional answer, like it's one person, or, well, actually, we derive from a completely separate school of autonomous governance where one of us actually is in charge of the entire process depending on what challenge approaches us. Todd leads for combat, Shauna leads for any kind of social interaction, and Jake over there, he's the magic guy. So, you know, if it glows, we ask Jake to take care of it. One of the last ones that I love is the idea of understanding what your players can do. So this requires you to take the time to actually read through your players' character sheets and understand their abilities. In my experience, one of the best ways to push your players to do something creative is the prison break episode. They're locked up. They've been kidnapped or they've been thrown in jail, maybe justly or unjustly, depending on how hard your players lean into that whole murder hobo mystique. And they end up having to push their way or figure out their way or sleuth their way or just get out of jail. They got to get out of lockup in order to accomplish the quest that they actually want to go out and do. If you take the time to set something up for your players where they have to think through their abilities and maybe think through the abilities of the other players in their party in order to successfully escape from jail, it can actually be a really great challenge, but you can have all the support built into your players already. If you throw them in jail with no way for them to get out, then that's far too much challenge and not enough support. If you know how you would escape from a jail situation using one of those characters, then chances are they can figure that out too. So make sure that you give them just enough challenge to make them think through the options that they have, but just enough support having built good characters to be able to think through the situation critically and come out successfully. 
So that's all I've got today. Thank you so much for watching. If this is something that you've seen other people do or you do it yourself, let me know here in the comment section or on Instagram or Twitter. I really wanna know if this is something that seems like you could be successful using for your players and in your campaigns. Because even though challenge and support theory might seem kind of simple at first, it's actually very nuanced and I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it's something that could benefit you as a storyteller, really help your players feel supported but also challenged enough to grow as they play through your game. It's common to hear the phrase, ask for help. It's advice I've given on this channel. But I wanted to turn it around for a second. Asking for help can be hard, and some of you may know that. And right now, especially with everybody staying inside, trying to be socially distant and being responsible about it, it's even harder to know if the loved ones that you have in your life are going through any kind of mental health challenge. But if somebody in your life is struggling with a mental health problem or might need help with their mental health, asking them if they need help is another great solution that you can have. Let them guide the conversation. Give them a chance to explain what they're going through. And most of all, please don't blame somebody for the mental health challenge that they're facing right now. Having a conversation with them, or at the very least just checking in with them, can make a world of difference in their lives in helping them to improve what they're going through and maybe feel the support that they need to be successful in the mental health challenges that they're facing currently. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, be kind, and have fun adventuring.